Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about the properties which can be derived from the protein 3D structures. In the last class, we discussed about protein 3D structures, right. What did we discuss in the last class? So, How to get the 3D structures? Experimental X-ray crystallography, NMR spectroscopy and lepton microscopy and uh, there are several uh, noble arrays, right, for understanding the structure and function of globular proteins using uh, X-ray crystallography or NMR spectroscopy, right. So, all the structures which are solved by X-ray or NMR uh, electron microscopy are deposited in the database, right. What is the name of the database? The protein That is a protein data bank, right. Protein data bank is maintained, right, with a research collaboratory in structural bioinformatics, right. So, there are several mirror sites in Japan, in US and in Europe, right. So, that you can get the access from different parts of the world. So, what are the major contents of protein data bank? Will be header, header information. Right, they have the header with the name and the source, right, and the how uh, the resolution and the secondary structures, publications, and you can have the data on the coordinates, right. So, what the information you, you can obtain from the coordinates? So, atom name, number. atom number, residue name, residue, residue number, chain, chain information, and, then and the coordinates, exact coordinates. B factor occupancy. 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 Right. We will get all the information ring for all the atoms right, in a protein. Then we discuss some of the visualization tools. There are several tools right, which are commonly available to view the structures and you can also uh, manipulate the structures in different directions and you can calculate the bond length, bond angles, torsion angles, mutations and so on. So, then we discuss in detail about pi mole. So, pi mole has several applications. What are the potential applications of pi mole? The you can you get the different uh, measurements and you can view the structures and you can make high quality figures, right? And you can do the mutation analysis, we can do the interactions, whether heterophobic or electrostatic or different interactions, right? So, it has wide applications, right? So, if you go through the pi mole, right, you check the tutorials and you will get uh, several options you can utilize pi mole effectively. So, we take the proteins structures. Mainly they are classified into four different classes depending upon the secondary structures present in protein structures, right. So, if you what is the secondary structures? Alpha the major secondary structures are alpha helices beta and beta strands, right. How these secondary structures are distributed in 3D structures? Based on that, we classify the proteins into four different groups. The major the major one that is all alpha proteins, right. All alpha protein contains mainly alpha helices. You can see the dominated by alpha helices, right. So, more than 40 percent alpha helices and less beta strands, right. You can see an example, right. Here you can see several alpha, alpha helices. This is the structure for myoglobin, right. This structure for the myoglobin, right. It contains eight alpha helices, but there are no beta strand here. So, you can see the structures. But alpha, all alpha proteins are getting popular because the first solid structure of pro globular proteins, right, which contains alpha helices, right. So, in this case it is popular and if you see the membrane proteins, here also you can see that the first solved membrane protein structures, right, that is photosynthetic reaction center, right, which also contains several alpha helices, right. So, alpha helices you can see the all alpha proteins are predominant, right. If you look at the all protein structures, you can see several uh, structures they belong to all alpha class. Then the second class likewise all alpha, some proteins they have more number of beta strands. Predominantly you can see the occurrence of beta strands and these type of proteins are called all beta proteins. You can see the dominance of beta strands, right. You can see in the structures, right. So, you can see lot of beta strands. For example, more than 40 percent of beta strands, right and less alpha helices, right. Okay. This is an example, okay. There is a concanavel in A. So, it contains several beta strands in this protein. So, one contains mainly alpha helices and the second class contains only beta strands. Now, the next possibility is the proteins contain both, both helices and strands. 
based on the location of this helices instance, they are classified in two groups. One is alpha plus beta and another is alpha by beta depending upon the location of this beta strand, alpha helix beta strands, whether they are separate segregated separately or they are mixing with each other. So, one class is alpha plus beta proteins right. In this case helices and strands tend to segregate. We can see the presence of more than 15 percent alpha helices right and more than 10 percent beta strands and the helices and strands okay, here you can see the helices and you can see strands right. So, they are uh, segregate from each other. And this is an example for lysozyme right, example for the alpha plus beta proteins. So, the fourth type of proteins right they are alpha by beta proteins right. Here also you can see the helices and strands, but they mix each other. You can see the more than 15 percent helices and more than 10 percent beta strands right. So, this is the numbers for understanding it is not hard and fast rules to have this specific numbers right. So, these helices strands right which are mixed with each other right for example, this one team right it contains 8 alpha helices and 8 beta strands. So, you can see alpha helices and beta strands, alpha helices, beta strands and so on right. You can see the structures uh, in the timbaral proteins. So, now how can we get the information whether a protein belongs to all alpha proteins or all beta or alpha plus beta or alpha by beta. So, to understand these characteristic features right there are several databases the major one is the scope. So, to classify the proteins based on different structural classes not only the just structural classes then also you have several sub classifications based on the how they fold, which family they belong to, what are super families right all the information they give. So, scope gives a comprehensive description of the structural and evolution relationship of the proteins of known structures. They started from the structures available in protein data bank and they classify the proteins right based on the information available in the structural uh, uh, data. So, they have the hierarchy levels, so they go with the family and then super family for example, take a protein right first the small one they belong to some family then different families they come close together and they have a super family then different super families they belong to same fold. So, go with the fold and the different folds right they, they have the similar class right for example, the uh, structural class all alpha right you can see four helical bundles fold and different types of helical folds right they are mainly a fold these are the helical uh, uh, proteins having different folds right they belong together and under the class all alpha. So, for example, he give one example. So, here lysozyme, right, the family is lysozyme. Then you can see the fold, right, you can see the lysozyme like common alpha plus beta motif and the structural class alpha plus beta, right. And you can identify this protein in a six letter code. First four are the PDB code, right. How to represent the PDB ID? First one, uh, first one is the numeric, numeric, right, first numeric and then three letters can be that contain numeric or this is the any alphabet set right? for example, 1 L is a TM. So, you can this is always uh, numeric and here this three either this is uh, alphabets or it is numeric right. So, these are the first four letters and if you have any chain information for example, a protein contains different chains right for example, hemoglobin how many chains in hemoglobin four, four chains, chains right two alpha and two beta in this case four chains for example, if you say A B C D then you can see the chain information here. If it is A chain it is A, B chain it is B and so on. And the sixth one you can see there are several domains. For example, if you have a large protein, it contains several domains right which are stable right. If you know the domain information then you can put the number 1, 2, 3 right they have the domain information. This is how they represent the structure of any, any, any protein. So, this is the web server right the database of the scope. You can search the database right with any PDB ID right or the names. So, here you can the root is a scope is the protein belongs to alpha plus beta and you can see the fold is lysozyme like right and you have the super family family and the and the protein name is lysozyme and the species homo sapiens is belongs to the human. Then they give the other entries which are relevant to the particular protein for example, in this case it is lysozyme. So, what are other proteins right which is similar to lysozyme you can give the uh, details about the similar entries. So, here is the web server the scope web server. So, here if you so, uh, access this site you can access this database and you can see the structure class information for several proteins. Similarly, there is another one server right this is also called kind of the database right they called cat C A T H. Here also they try to classify the structures based on the class. 
similar to scope and the architecture and the topology and the super family. They use this word C A T H which represents class A for architecture, T for topology and H for homologous super family. So, what is C, what is A, what is T and what is H? If you see their class is the simplest level for different classes just we discussed. What are the four different classes? Alpha, al alpha, al beta, alpha plus beta and alpha by beta right. You can see the four different this is a, the simplest way right. And then go with the architecture this summarizes the orientation of the structural units like this is a barrels or sandwich and so on. Then the topology level here you can see the sequence of connectivity how the members of this architecture right how they are connected. Sometimes you have the same architecture, but they have the different topologies right, depending upon the alpha galaxy beta standards how they are connected with each other. Then the last one is the homologous super families that is H or the similar structure and function. So, based on the connectivity and the proteins which have a similar structure function or the orientation of the secondary structure right they classify in different groups right. So, this word they called as CATH C for class A for architecture T for topology and H for homologous super families ok. This is the database the CATH database ok you can hear for the same human lysozyme. So, it is the class is mainly alpha here and the architecture they put the number 1.10 uh, this orthogonal bundle and the lysozyme right and the super families belongs to hydrolyze. In the case of scope right what is the classification for the class right lysozyme they put alpha plus beta, but here they put uh, all alpha right. Most of the cases you can see the sim uh, similar classifications and some cases you can see the uh, differences right. I will explain why there is uh, some difference right for the same protein in different uh, 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 databases. If you look at the several structures right, almost all the structures in the protein, protein data bank and if you classify based on scope or the cat most of the cases you can have the similar classification right that is not much different. In some cases it is possible to the different assignments in scope and cat especially for the case of this uh, uh, alpha plus beta or alpha beta protein right. How this happens? Right. How do you classify the all alpha? So most mostly mostly uh, alpha helices. How do you classify alpha plus beta? It has both alpha helices and beta strands, right? Depending upon this cutoff values, right? For example, if you take 10 percent or 15 percent, right? Then you can see either they belong to all alpha or belong to another mixed class, alpha plus beta or alpha beta, right? If the helical content is high, then you can see this can be all alpha proteins. Sometimes the helical content is high, but also it contains beta, beta strands. In this case, we have the conflict. If we consider the high helical content, right? You, in this case, you can see this can be classified as all alpha. So, in this case, hemolysozyme, if you look to the look into the contents, alpha helical structure is 31 percent and beta strand is 8 percent. So, it is high content of alpha that is more than 30 percent. So, it classified as uh, alpha uh, all alpha protein, right, in cath. Due to the presence of helices and strands more than 5 percent strand and more than 30 percent helix right it is classified as alpha plus beta in the case of uh, scope. This happens only for few structures. So, in this case we need to check this databases see whether there is consistency or not. Then based on your requirements you can classify this as all alpha or alpha plus beta. Then if you have the structures right you can get the structures from protein data bank right then you can derive several parameters we like the from sequence we derived various factors what are the various properties we derived from sequence amino acid Compo occurrence composition molecular weight average, average property values Hydrophobic. and then hydrophobicity profile Dipopid. and you can do the uh, dipeptide uh, composition and you can do the alignment multiple sequence alignment conservation that right? several features you can do it. Likewise if we have the 3D structures we can do better because 3D structures contain more information than amino acid sequences. So, you can derive various parameters right and the important aspect is whatever the parameter we derive from the structures they have some implications they have some applications to understand the structure or function or anything related to the diseases. I will explain some of the features for example, contact maps right this is the simplest one we can construct from protein 3D structures and accessible surface area contact order right depending upon the how the two recipes are contact in protein structures and long range order that depending upon the contacts which are close in space, but they are far in the sequence level and some cases some recipes have more number of contacts. 
some case less number of contacts right some case more number of contacts for example in a class for example a class representative right we keep we can have large more number of contacts right some some students they have less number of contacts right so then these contacts are important right so the residues which have more number of contacts they have higher influence right this is this is the principle of multiple contact index then we can derive other factors like hydrophobicity buriedness transfer free energy how the accessibility is reduced from the unfolded state to goes to folded state how to get the different interactions cut and pay interactions electrostatic interaction hydrophobic interactions and so on so we'll explain some of the parameters right and derive how to do it so first one is the simplest one we can obtain from the 3d structures is the contact maps right so what is the contact map it simply represents the distance between different residues in protein structures so we have a 3d structures the atoms and the residues are located with the xyz coordinates right and in the contact map you can see how the residue 1 and 2 are in contact with each other 1 and 5 are in contact or not so the representation of the 3d structures into 2d graph for example if x axis if we have the amino acid sequence right so amino acid sequence here and y axis is the amino acid sequence say 1 2 3 like that right now the question is whether these residues are in contact or not if they are in contact you put a dot if no contact leave it then you will get a matrix right we will show you whether which residues are in contact right i'll show you uh, some examples so two residues i and j one the, the residue i second another residue j right if it is equal if this matrix is one if the residues are closer than any specific threshold at right, any distance in this case we need the information regarding a distance right and then getting the distance which atoms we need to consider these are two different aspects we need to construct a contact map so if you look this is the example for the contact map just i showed earlier so here you have the amino acid sequence x axis y axis amino acid sequence right and you can put a dot if i and j are closer closer in specific threshold right otherwise it's a blank if you see this graph what you can infer from this graph so diagonals you can see it is always present what does it mean nearby residues are nearby residues right because they are near the van der waals contacts so in this case 1 and 2 1 and 3 like 2 and 3 2 and 1 so they are always in contact right so this way it is uh, in the diagonal you can see always the present and if you close to the diagonal some cases you can see uh, there some residues are present right some cases no in this case there is no in this case there is no right most of the case it is yes but if you look at the specific cases for example here it is the very far in this case it is around 10 this around 300 these residues they are close in space but they are far away in the sequence right i will explain the details now when you make the contact right as i discussed earlier there are two different aspects one is we need to fix the distance second one we need to fix the threshold if you take the the atoms there are various uh, uh, ways to define this either you can consider c alpha atoms that's the simplest one take all the, consider only c alpha atoms and see the uh, distance or you can see c beta atoms right because c beta atoms you can see the interior of the protein right this way uh, many many researchers they use c beta atoms so can we use c beta atoms for all the residues no except like no right because one residue right for glycine doesn't have the c beta So in this case, they use alpha, and all other residues they use beta, right? They represent better than the C alpha, so they use C beta atoms. Or you can use any atoms. First, you use five, and you use ten. They are in contact or not? You can see any of the heavy atoms, which are within the specific distance. Or you can use centroid. Any atom, any residue, you can get the centroid, x-axis coordinates, right? Now, now all the residues, right, are represented by the centroids. then you can calculate the distance and then you can see the cut off right so there are various ways you can consider atoms either c alpha or you can get c beta or all are any heavy atoms or you can use centroid then the distance which distance we need to consider 4 5 6 which distance you want to consider depending upon the atoms you consider for example if you use c alpha or c beta 
there you can use the distance of 6 to 12 angstrom right because we consider only one atom. In the case if you have the all atoms then you can reduce or let it go with 4 angstrom or 5 angstrom otherwise you will get more number of contacts right. So, depending upon the atoms you use either C alpha or C beta or all atoms you can define the threshold. So, now here this is a coordinates. So, this is the residue name what are the coordinates here right x is the coordinates what is the next one occupancy this one b factor right ok. So, you have the exercise coordinates right any protein structure if you go I discussed I showed earlier uh, the word the protein data bank right one example. So, you will get the same uh, the level of this representation you can see exercise coordinates you can use these coordinates to construct contact maps right for example I show the coordinates these x y z coordinates. So, you all this is the C alpha atoms because I extract the C alpha atoms from here right the, this is 36.942 ok see the C alpha atoms right. So, here this is the coordinate 36 th minus 23 and minus 8 right I extract all the C alpha atoms C alpha atoms in this case which distance is better to define 6 to 12, 6 to 12, 12, 12 angstrom 6 to 14 angstrom. So, I use the let us see use the distance of 8 angstrom right because these are the C alpha atoms and you can construct maps. How to construct a contact map? Right, first this is what is the x axis this is a sequence right, this is a sequence here here also you have the sequence. So, now we have the residues right you can see this is the 1 is methionine 2 is asparagine 3 is isolation right we have the residues or you can put the numbers ok 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. So, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. So, take 1 1 and 2 are in contact yes right 1 and 3 yes 1 and 4 but 1 and 5 uh, one, uh, 1 and 4 not in contact not in contact 1 and 5 not in contact 1 and 5 also no uh, here 3 9 36 plus 9 equal to 45 16. Okay, maybe in contact okay, let us see Four. about 1 and 6 in contact in contact 1 and 7 no no 1 and 8 no no 1 and 9 no no 1 and 10 no we get 12 and 20 the already seven right no okay then the 2 2 and 3 Yes. Yes. Two and four. Seven, uh, yes. Two and five. Four. Yeah. Two and five. Yes. Uh, yes. Two and six. Yes. Yes. Two and seven. Two and seven. Yes. No, right? No. Yeah. Two and eight. No. Two and nine. No. Sir. No. Two and ten. No, 34, 43. So, this no. Then we'll go to 3, 3 and 4. Three yes. Four, yes. 3 and 5, yes. 3 and 6. Yes. 3 and 7. Yes. 3 and 8. No. Oh, no. 3 and 9, no. 3 and 10, no. Then 4 and 5. Yes. Yes. 4 and 6, x. 4 and 7. Yes. Uh, 4 and 7. Okay, yes, four and eight, probably yes, four and nine, maybe no, right? No. Yeah, four and ten, no. No. right? Then five, five and six, yes, five and seven, yes, five and eight, yes, five and nine, yes, five and ten, yes. maybe no. Then six and seven, yes, six and eight, six and nine, no. 36, 13 and 43. Yes. 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 So, 6 and 10, 4. Yes. Yes. Okay, I will put yes. Then 7, 7 and 8, yes. 7 and 9, yes. 7 and 10, yeah, yes. Then 8, 8 and 9, 
8 and 10, 9, 9 and 10, right. So, you can consider the matrix. So, we will get the symmetrical matrix or the non symmetric matrix, this one. We will get symmetric, right. Why it is symmetric? We have not drawn the other set. Yeah, we will not draw the other set because if 2 and 3 are in contact, then 3 and 2 are also in contact, right. Not like the amino acid sequence. There you talk about the neighboring residues. So, in this case, we do not get a symmetric matrix, right. But here, if 2 residues are in contact, right, 2 and 3 in contact, 3 and 2 are also in contact. So, in this case, you can get the asymmetric matrix. So, here you can see the diagonal. From this one, you can easily say that the residues are influenced with the short range contacts because the residues which are very close. Then, some residues, right, you can see even near the uh, diagonal, 2, 3 residues which are far away they are also contributing right or they are also interacting in protein structures right. And here we consider only 10 residues, 10 uh, residues this is why we will show we could see the long range contacts. But in this figure right we can see the long range contact for this. So, depending upon these contacts right based on the space and how they are located in the sequence we can classify into different uh, types of interactions right different types of contacts whether these contacts are short range that means short in terms of sequence right because we fix a space because when you, cons when you construct the map the space is fixed any distance 6 angstrom or 7 angstrom or 8 angstrom we fixed. Now, the difference is only at the sequence level. So, the sequence level we see whether they are very close in sequence right and how far they are dist uh, dist uh, uh, apart in the sequence. Personally, if we see this this one right the T is the central one and the radius is 8 angstrom, we construct a sphere and there are several residues. Now, these residues are located in, in the sequence which I give below, right. So, I can see this uh, the T is central, we can see the 3 here and how they are distributed along the sequence. Based on the distribution of the residues along the sequence, we can classify into different uh, types. One we can see short range contacts that we just we want to see the residues which are close to the central residue either plus 2, plus 1 or plus 2. Almost all residues they have a short range contacts, right. So, if we take any residue, how many short range contacts uh, each residue will have? 3, 4. 4 residues, right. For example, we take 5, for example, residue number 5. So, if we residue number 5, then you can see 4, 3, 6, 7. So, 4 contacts. Then you can see whether any residue, the residues they have contact with at least plus or minus 3 or plus or minus 4 residues. In this case, you can see some medium range contacts. We uh, use 3 or 4 because we need to represent the type of alpha releases, right. What is how the alpha releases are formed? What is the range? I and I plus 4, right. In this case, you can see it will come within this range. And you can see long range contacts if it is more than 4, but this limit is so far because you can see they are very large. So, you can see even 4 we can uh, divide into small bins 4 to 10, 11 to 20, and so on, and then see why, why which range you can see the contacts in different types of uh, uh, structural classes. So, here I show you a figure this, uh, this is the contact of T152 of lysozyme there is a real contacts if you look into the PDB structure and take the 319152 and if you get the residues which are within the limit of 8 angstrom you can get this figure. If you see this one we can define the short medium and long range contacts some residues for example, F153 and uh, 151 they are just neighboring residues. These residues form short range contacts and some cases for example, 156 and 155 they are 3 to 4 residues far apart. So, they make medium range contacts and some residues which are far away in the sequence, but they are close in space for example, 3152 and A98 right. What is the, di what is the uh, distance in the sequence level? 54 residues right. So, they are far away in the sequence. So, these residues contribute long range contacts right. So, if you take a structures then you can see the contacts based on the short range, medium range and long range. You can also interpret in terms of alpha helix and beta strands. The alpha helix you can see the dominated mainly by the medium range interactions and the beta strands which are dominated by long range interactions why? Because of the hydrogen bonding patterns right in the alpha helix and the beta, beta strands. Right. So, now if you see this one diagonal ones they are mainly this is the short range this are the short range contacts and you can see the residues very close by the diagonal these are medium range 
and here you can see their long range. And if you see the location secondary structures, for example, we see these are the beta strands, right? You can see the beta strands here because there are many long range contacts. And several cases, these are mainly alpha helices. And if you see the distribution of secondary structures and the contacts, easily you can say that which region belongs to helices, which region belongs to beta strands based on these patterns. The long range contacts mainly they are far away from the diagonal. So, now I show the data for the four structure classes. We discussed four structure classes, right? What are the four structure classes we discussed? All alpha, all alpha, alpha, all beta, alpha plus beta, and alpha beta. So, if you see the all alpha class, all alpha class dominated with helices, right? Helices are uh, well dominated with medium range interactions, right? So, in this case, if you see, we have different residue intervals, so medium range 3 to 4, and then we can see one or two residues apart, 5 or 6. So, you can see more than 25 percent of this. Uh, helices, you can see mainly at this level 4 to 10 interval, and you can see it is very very less for the different cases, it is going down, right. There are the contacts from the long range is very less in the in, in case of all alpha proteins. But if we look into the all beta proteins, right, this is the all beta proteins, right, ok, ok, this is all beta proteins. So, here all beta proteins, you can see the range is 11 to 20. Because mainly this uh, antipolar beta strands, okay, they have the hydrogen binding pattern with respect to uh, more than 10 residues. So, you can see 11 to 20 residues that is the dominance in case of all, all beta proteins. But looking to alpha plus beta proteins, right, there is in between, right, you can see uh, both the cases, this is the all alpha, is all beta, you can see this in between that. Here also all beta, here is all alpha, in between all alpha and all beta. But looking to alpha by beta proteins. So, what is a specialty in all beta alpha by alpha by beta proteins? Alternate. Alternate, alternate one alpha one beta. In this case, if you take two beta or if you take two alpha, the distance will be more, right? If you take the beta strands, right? So, beta alpha and beta. So, in between one alpha, it crosses more than 10 15 residues. This is the reason if you take this type of proteins, right, we can see this dominant in the 21 to 30 range. Okay, several timbaral proteins. Right. In this, see if you see the hydrogen binding pattern, they are between 21 to 30, this way it is dominant in, the, in 21 to 30 range. So, that makes sense and if you see the structures, you can relate the secondary structures, the structure class as well as the number of uh, contacts in protein structures. This is another, I show example, this is all alpha, this is all beta, right. If you look at these figures and the based on the number of contacts, mainly the long range contacts, right. So, which one has more number of long range contacts? All beta is expected, right? So you can see more number there up to 13 contacts, but here it is very less, and most of the cases it is zero. Many cases you can see zero, that no long range contact in the case of all alpha proteins. But here there is very less. Most of them are having more than six long range contacts. What do you expect for the alpha plus beta and alpha by beta? Right? Alpha plus beta, if you take, you can see the mixed combination of these two. One part it should be less number of long range contacts, and another part you can see the more number of long range contacts. You can see this. Right, if you see here, okay, here you have more number of long range contacts, here you have less number of long range contacts. Here, most of the cases they have uh, zero uh, long range contacts. That is fine, right, you can understand. So, then the alpha by beta, you can see the zigzag, right, you have some high and low, high, low, that is you can see the patterns. So, in terms of this contacts, you can easily understand different structure classes and how they interact and how they make the patterns, then easily you can see the different functional aspects, right, this is the contact they will make and how we can uh, uh, superimpose diff different structures and to understand the different functions. So, now we have the contact maps, to construct the contact map, what are the different information do you need? Coordinates. We need the coordinates and we need to consider the distance plus the atoms, right, depending upon the atom type, right, you can fix a distance and you can see if this is in contact, you can put a dot and you can see, get the construct the contact maps. That is simply the representation, right, of the 3D structures in the 2D space, right, then you can understand how they receive the contact with each other different structure classes.